What's up, guys? Welcome back to Roblox Talk. Let's do some more draft coverage. We're going to look at another center today. We're going to look at Zach Frazier, West Virginia center. Could be a top 50 type of player. And yes, we're looking at center again. It's an area of improvement that we feel is on this roster. And guess what? We got Plus with us today. So Plus, tell me a little bit of what Zach Frazier can bring. Right. Like you like you said, I think he's a top 50 player, but his movement skills are very good. Uh, definitely fits the zone scheme run blocking uh, system. That's something that, you know, Liam Cohen's going to bring to the table. And you could use a guy like this. You could use, um, you know, obviously upgrade at center, but he could also play left guard. Uh, he played a little guard um, his sophomore year. But this guy is just very tough, has a former wrestling background. So good movement, good hand, you know, strength, grip. You're all going to, you're going to see it in this uh, study here as we move along. But very smart player too, just understands leverage. You see here holding that guy up and then getting to the second level. Um, really understands how to move within tight areas. So that's that's a good plus. Yeah, like you were mentioning, a good feel for the zone. Like he's initially on this tackle right in front of him, yeah, but you want him to eventually get to the second level, but he's not rushing it, right? He's not just getting off this block immediately because he wants to maintain that block. Number eight's just sitting here. What is he doing? I don't know. He's probably should be going with the ball carry, but he's not. So the center's just staying on his man just to help out with the block. So, and then just throws the guy to the ground. But yeah, he does have the tenacity you like in a center and an offensive lineman that yeah, Dave Canales was wanting more of from this offensive line that he didn't really get last year. Right, absolutely. And then again, same thing here as you see him move uh, to the left here just shows, again, good movement skills, gets on uh, the defensive tackle. Even though, you know, the defense tackle ends up making the, the play, uh, does a good job of continuing to finish through um, and really plays through the whistle. So you're going to see that a lot uh, in his game as we move through here. Yeah, if you think about it, he pushed him forward another five yards. And here's what we're talking about, getting to the second level, getting a little chip, helping out the right guard here on this guy, and then gets up to the second level to get this linebacker over here. Break that down a little bit. Right, yeah, just a simple duo concept. And again, that's something Liam Cohen's going to run a lot here with with the Bucks. so a natural fit there. Um, and you see his, his leg drive, his power, again, continue to stay engaged with the linebacker and throws him out of the play. Yeah, those hands right in the chest, the guy, that's playing with leverage right there. Here we go again, just a lot of, in the noise, not getting thrown around. Tell me what's going on here. Yeah, here, I, again, number 10 is trying to get low. You know, low man wins, but Zach's got such very strong grip. He just picks him up and puts him down. Uh, really does a good job of re-anchoring his feet um, and then driving through. So really like that about his game. His footwork is really on a good level right now, and you could see that continuing to get better as he matures. Yeah, a lot of using his hips, hands, everything working in unison and understanding, okay, the run's going this way. I have to do everything in my power to get the, the player that I'm blocking out of that position. And he does. They pick up a first down, keep moving the chains, which you like to see. Here again, more athleticism here. Yeah, the guy he shoves makes a play on the ball, but the quarterback ran right into it. Uh, a lot of this is just showing how he can get out in space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Just showing his ability to displace uh you know defenders and that's really exciting and again moving on space creating a, a a hole there you see the seam that he seals off um being able to get the backside uh you know defense alignment there seals him really good with one arm pretty much um and creates a big running lane for number four so that is what you want um from your center or any offense alignment and another thing to touch on, again, awareness, understanding, okay, there's not really a linebacker in that space, so I don't really need to move on to the second level. So I'm just going to stay to this block to really get that seal where this guy can get run through an alleyway, right? So it's almost a wide open gaping hole because no one was there. He just stayed on his block. Uh, here we go again, pass blocking. What do you see with him with pass blocking? Yeah, pass blocking, I think he, again, it just, he shows awareness. He shows really good hands, um, not over aggressive at, you know, at most of the time. I think he does a good job of really, once he lets the guy get into him, really powers his punches really well, times it well, knows how to use his feet and, and arms, like you said, in unison. So he can anchor pretty solidly. Man, the biggest thing, we see a difference between him and Robert Hainsey, who is our current center. Look how much more stockier he is. Look how big his lower half is. He's got bigger lower half to, to anchor better, right? As opposed mm -hmm. to getting pushed into the, the, the quarterback's throwing window. And again, here, just kind of getting bull rushed, but staying pat there. He gets beat at the end. The guy kind of pulls him, gets catches him leaning, but still point, stout at the point of attack. What do you see here? 
Yeah, that's a good rep. Uh, again, he's just, again, into the body. The chest plate of number 10 does a good job of just maintaining his ground. Um, the quarterback holds it a little bit too long here. Um, and then, you know, number 10 uh, eventually gets in. But that's a good rep, and you're going to continue to see that as we move forward. Yeah, like I was saying, he gets a little caught leaning. Maybe a hold, maybe not. It is what it is. Keep going on to the pass coverage. And a lot of the natural feel again, like you mentioned, he puts his hand on this guy as he's looking a different way. So he's just feeling this guy out. Hey, if he's pass rushing, do I have a guy coming stunting from the other side since this guy's leaving my alleyway? Someone usually fills those holes, right? So don't just neglect an alleyway where you can leave the, the spot available so the quarterback can get sacked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly right. And it's just showing his cerebralness like he has that, you know, that next level ability to really understand diagnose plays before they happen. Um, so that is a good thing you want in your offense alignment. And you see that there as he maintains his, uh, you know, leverage and just spot there to not allow the, you know, the pocket to collapse and allows this throw to be completed. And as you're saying now, it's just also, he's understanding, okay, is the middle linebacker coming in. So you think about it, he's staring him down, waiting. Is he making decisions? Is he going back? Is he coming in? Which way is he going to go? while keeping the hand on the defensive tackle, realize he's not coming in, so someone else has to be coming into the alleyway. That is just breaking that down right there. That was really heady by him, understanding who, who should be coming and not getting too, um, not nervous, but not too overzealous to attack a certain guy, just staying in that zone. Yep, absolutely. And you see it here again, just showing that awareness. Again, having one arm on number 10 does a good job of, you know, kind of jolting him there, kind of passing him off making sure again, number eight's not coming in on the blitz pressure. And again, ends up being a touchdown because of it. So good protection. And then here again, just showing his ability to maintain anchor um, does get drive back just a little bit here, but again, he's fighting with number 28 does a good job of, you know, just keeping him off bay uh, allows the quarterback to escape the pocket and make a play with his legs. Yeah. I always like his hand placement. It's always inside chest or right up at the shoulder level pad. He's not doing the bear hug, which we saw um, Cody Mock do a lot last year. I mean, that look at the hand placement here. He's even though he's getting pushed back, the head's getting slapped back by this different uh, defensive tackle. Look at the pad level, trying to raise him up, trying not to have it go through his chest plate, but raise the the momentum of the pass rusher up in the air instead of through his chest. So I like that a lot, and it's very consistent. Yeah, definitely. You can see like his technique is very sound. Um, I, again, he has a wide base there. Um, yeah. So that is important. Like his footwork and his hands are connected. And that's usually a big deal for offense alignment. And that usually tells you um, if this guy is going to be, you know, one of the top few selected. And I think he could be, he definitely could be in play for pick 26. Let's know what you guys think of Zach Frazier. Um, let us, you know, just give us your thoughts on what you thought of this film study. Uh, do you think he could be in play at 26 or do you think maybe we could get him in the second round? But at the end of the day, Zach Frazier is really good. And I think he'll be uh, a top 50 selection for sure heading into this year's class. So with that said, hope you guys enjoyed it until the next one.